segment of the BTS vlogs um, <laughs> as you can tell I've lost uh, all concept of what segment this actually is so, uh, uh, so to begin this gives a time and date stamp it is 15 hours and 58 minutes into the day of Monday April 14th 2014 and yesterday was Palm Sunday, and this is uh, beginning. The next two weeks are what we call Pascha week. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows. Everyone knows it as Easter, but the Eastern Greeks and the Eastern Christians know it as Pascha. And uh, instead of being a one-day celebration, it's it's basically uh, the festivals are held. Uh, the week before, right, from Palm Sunday on, and then the week after. So that's the we'll call it the immediate celebration. But Pascha continues on all the way in the Eastern tradition, all the way until Pentecost. So that's another fifty days afterwards. So we're going to be doing uh, the V Loia Pascha. That that's the the the. the the vlog Pascha, you know, the, if you want to vlog Easter that I've been doing, if you look at the title there, there's uh, in Greek there, uh, there's the Greek version of the vlog. And we'll be doing that close to 100 days, basically until Pentecost, because uh, you have 50 days before and then 50 days after. Uh, but we're now in the immediate two weeks, so we have the week before, then we have the week after. And yeah, so <laughs> uh, that will sort of shift up the schedule a little bit. Uh, I will be doing some vlogging, not from here, but from uh, a, another location. I'll be vlogging from my second home in church. And that's right, my second home is in church. Uh, we view the church as a house, and once you get to a certain relationship with the church, with with Christ, uh, it becomes your house, and in in many ways. You are as comfortable in it as if as if you were in your own home. So uh, that's what I will be doing on uh, uh, more likely Thursday and Friday. So uh, that's the intention. We'll see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, so I'm resting up now. I'm getting my extra sleep, trying to sort of catch up on my sleep. But as I was talking about yesterday, in yesterday's uh, morning vlog, uh, I had a question about being a freegan. And so I've decided now to include uh, more uh, freegan content in here and more details about being a freegan. Because it is not a one thing, oh, I want to be a freegan and that's it. There's a process to it. And the whole goal of what I'm doing here behind the scenes is to show you what I'm doing. And since people are interested in, in the freaking lifestyle, I'll show you more of the freaking lifestyle. And the thing is, is that, is that you, there isn't any one way, one particular way to start. It's simply a matter of you're trying to reduce the cost that you have. And uh, because my institute is private, I don't have government funding. Uh, the institute itself is on, on a freaking thing. So that's why I'm on Linux, open source, more often than not, it's free. That's Linux and that's uh, open hardware. All that stuff is free and it's usually cheap. So that's why I go on that, why I'm on, on Linux, why I'm on, on Ubuntu. Well, because it's open source and it's free. That's part of the freegan lifestyle. Uh, part of the freegan lifestyle is also once you do have a certain degree of expertise, you start giving back to the community. You know, you work together as a community. Uh, you're not necessarily isolated by yourself. But then again, you're not slaves. It's not, you're not forced to be 
part of a community in terms of you have to conform to everybody's standards. You're part of a community, but you also remain an individual at the same time with your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own standards, and you're not forced to conform to any partic particular ideal or set of ideals. And that's kind of the way I like things. Uh, so that's what's appealing to me in terms of my freaking my freaking values. It's, I don't want to belong. To, I don't want to be forced into accepting community values that I don't believe in. In other words, uh, I'm not a. I, and this is why I am the way I am, and I don't really have that many friends. Is I'm not a conformist. I have a hard time conforming to other people's I, sense of ideals, even if they may be perfectly logical to them. Uh, I just have a hard time with it. I don't have if if I don't I have a full understanding of why I'm doing something, then I can't do it. And this is the part of the problem that I had in regular university is that we were expected in regular university, in regular academics, to accept certain things as gospel truth, as these are given truths. Well, no, I need to understand why this is the way it is, and that's kind of the way I am as a person. And so what happens is that I would come up with questions that I'm not supposed to be at, not supposed to have. And well, you know, Daniel, as a physicist, as a scientist, you're not supposed to have these questions. Oh, I do. I do have these questions. I do have to understand why something is. I can't simply accept that it is the way it is. Uh, and that, see, that's, that's, that, that's not an answer for me, that it is the way it is. And for more, for more often than not, from what I've seen from my own research experience, even when I do things observational, I do find a reason for it. There is, even if I don't fully understand the reason, I do see a reasoning, a, a, you know, a, a, there is a reason that I observe. So nothing is, is simply, oh, that's the way it is, there is no answer to this. Here, Daniel, uh, you'll have to sort of accept this the way it is. No, there, you, you do see functionality. You do see... Uh, and you can't observe explanation. You can observe and obtain an, an not a full understanding, but an understanding. Not the full understanding, but you can get an understanding of, of what it is you're observing. And this is that's acceptable to me. You know, working towards an understanding that's acceptable to me. Simply accepting something the way it is, you know, because you're told that's what it is, is unacceptable to me. So. Uh, that's kind of the way things go. Uh, <laughs> and so this is kind of the way freakingism is for me. Freaking is this individual idealist, you know, is, 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 is this individualism. But you do have a sense of community in it as well. So I will be taking you out to the dumpster. I will talk about, in the kitchen diner, I'll be talking about the rice cooker. The rice cooker I just tested out. The one I designed worked very well. Now it's a matter of uh, putting together uh, recipes for rice. And this given uh, average rice cooker costs about hundred dollars plus. This rice cooker cost me about twenty dollars to put together. So that's going to tell that that's the difference between that, between being a freaking and not being a freaking. If I wasn't a freaking, I'd be spending upwards. Uh, I'd be spending hundred dollars plus. As a freaking, I saved eighty dollars and spent only twenty dollars. <laughs> uh, and the price, if you sort of average it out in terms of how I use the the, the Use all the different things. You'll see that it's actually cheaper than that. So, uh, anyways, uh, we're getting near the end of our time, and uh, I will start vlogging more from all the different areas in here. Now that we're doing more freaking work, I'll show you how to do the uh, sorting, and so we'll do that in the back room warehouse, the machine shop warehouse, I should say. And yeah, anyways, have a nice day. Hope to see you more. Have a good Pascha week, and see you. Later. <laughs>
and things are chugging along. And as you may notice, uh, more of the BTS vlogs are coming out, more of the productions are getting done, and yay, that's a good thing. <laughs> also, for those of you who are Greek or from the Middle East and you're Eastern Christian, uh, Galactus, Kalianastasi. Uh, I almost forget. I almost, almost wish you a uh, Merry Christmas, but uh, it's not Christmas. It's, it's uh, Anastasi is coming up. We're in the final week. Uh, and I was thinking about it is that I'm going to go from feast to feast. Uh, the difference between fasting and feasting is essentially one letter. <laughs> fasting is F-A-S-T-I-N-G. Feasting is F-E-A-S-T-I-N-G. So there's one letter difference between fasting and feasting. But if you know how to cook, and you know the ancient recipes that, that came from the East, you know the Eastern recipes, how to, how to cook Eastern food, uh, then... There is no difference between fasting and feasting because all that happens between fasting and feasting is a change in menu. So I'll give you an example. Uh, when you're fasting, you have, uh, let's say, what I do is I do a nice spaghetti with a, uh, a uh, uh, bruschetta uh, tomato sauce. I make, a, uh, I make a tomato sauce that's almost like a bruschetta. Uh, and it's got that flavor to it. And that's where, how I have my spaghetti. And it's very easy to do. It takes me it takes me not even 15, 20 minutes to do. It's a very fast thing. And I've got it set up almost like a diner situation. That's what the kitchen diner. Uh, with the kitchen diner set up, uh, within 20 minutes I'm eating. It's, it's, it's as fast as going to McDonald's. So it's not an issue to sort of pre prepare that. When I'm feasting, is again, homemade, homemade, uh, homemade pastrami. I do my own. I cure my own meats. I haven't been able to do do my own cured meats. If I want a steak, I buy an entire roast and I cut the steaks out of the roast. Significantly cheaper than going and buying pre-cut steaks. Uh, and then it, it, once you learn how to do these different things, it, it, you know, it, this is how, as you start learning the stuff, as you start going back to the whole, you go back to the villages. Uh, this is how you become a freegan. Freegan, you know, freeganism doesn't have to be the Western standard of, you know, become a hermit, tie, tie a, a leaf hat on your head, and that's it. Uh, there is a lot of ancient cultures out there, uh, a lot of what called so-called peasant food. That's very good. Um, you know, you know, <laughs> vegans, right? Go flax and kale as their as their diet. Uh, why? If you instead of going uh, flax and kale, which is boring, uh, and, and for my turn, crappy, why don't you just go to uh, to a pad thai? You can do a vegan. You can do a, a, veg, a vegetarian pad, pad thai. It's been around for a long time. It's been around for a couple thousand years, and there's a lot of rice noodle dishes that you can use that, uh, based off the pad thai recipe, you have thousands of variations in there. So you you know you don't have to, from my perspective, you don't have to choose the Western model of things. My preference is to take a lot of the stuff I've learned from the East, from Eastern philosophy, from Eastern traditions, from Eastern culture, and mix it with some of the Western ideas. So you take the Western idea of freeganism, you mix it in with the Hodyo. And what you've learned from Hodyo, if you have access to Hodyo, to a Hodyo, or people who are from the Hodyo, learn from them. these people become these pe people become your textbooks. This is how you learn. You learn from them. You learn from their experience. You watch them. You observe them. This is your school. This is your textbooks. This is your classroom. And if you understand this, then you can also begin to understand how uh, if you want to mix this in with Buddhism. And understand that Richard Gere and all these Hollywood Buddhists are not real Buddhists. Buddhism, and if you went and watched the real Indian films from about Buddha, and, Indi and, and incidentally, Buddha was an Indian prince, and you can watch these Indian films about Buddha, then you'll understand that all meditation and being spiritual isn't sitting cross-legged with a bald head.
you know, in, 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 in wrapped in your sheets, you wrapped in your bed sheet. That's not being a Buddhist. Being a Buddhist is taking on struggles, taking on uh, these various different meditations, and then these struggles are meditations. Prayer, as I said, is a meditation. Uh, fasting is a meditation. Uh, poverty, taking on a, a, a vow of poverty, what they call a vow of poverty. And it's not really a vow of poverty. It's choosing to take on a struggle, to take on a exercise, to take on a meditation of, and it is a, it's, it's not really, it's not really a vow of poverty. It's taking on the meditation of poverty. It's learning from poverty what is missing in your life spiritually. Because when you have material goods, these material goods, your possessions, become your possessions. In other words, you become possessed by your possessions. And so initially, once you want to start wanting these possessions, and you want to have these possessions, and you start to need these possessions, once you start to need these possessions, the possessions are no longer yours, but you are what you've bought. You 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 are your possessions, possessions. And this, this is where you can get, you know, some word fun and sort of talk, you know. And it doesn't have to be, for me, it's not serious, serious. This is part of my daily life. And as I said, fasting isn't fasting. Fasting is one letter off from feasting. And all it is for me, because I do have this whole year lifestyle, I do have the freaking lifestyle, it's simply one letter off from, from feast. Feast and fast are exactly the same thing for me. It's just simply a change in menu. So, so I wish to everybody uh, a, um, a Kalopaska. For those of you who are Christian, Western Christian, did, uh, I feel sorry for you because a lot of your traditions are gone. You need to look to the, if you're a Western Christian and you're watching these uh, movies like The Passion of the Christ, there's a lot more to the history of Christ than you've ever known. As a matter of fact, if you look at the original history of Christ, you go back to the early Christian church. 90% of the early Christian church is gone, is missing from your life. It's not It's not that it's gone completely. It's still there. People who are Eastern Christians are still enjoying this. It's the Western Christian that, that, that tradition is gone. And anyways, our time is now up. And I think we're having more, more of an a, a interesting discussion. So <laughs> I will see you because I've got church later on tonight. Again, uh, in a couple of hours, so I've got to get something to eat for breakfast, go to church, and then I'll see you probably on a walk because I do have to go food shopping tonight, so uh, we'll have more of a discussion there. We'll do our, our shopping and philosophy. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. It's time for another BTS vlog, yes, or actually it's another segment. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. So let's get this uh, vlog started with our time and date stamp. It is 15 hours and 39 minutes into the day of Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. Yeah, today's going to be a busy week. We're down to the last three days of uh, the first part of Pascha. So we start off with the first 50 days, which is fasting. Or I call uh, which is one letter off a feast. <laughs> so uh, in three days my menu changes, and that means uh, tonight, tomorrow night, and actually you know, Thursday and fr Thursday and Friday. Uh, that's when I move into the church. I spend uh, about a day there. Uh, it's kind of like my second home. It's like it's like going on a vacation to back to your house again. Uh, <clears throat> And you just hang out, uh, there's things to read, there's uh, people to talk to, uh, and there's also the service going on at the same time, so uh, you can also study, your, you, you can study the Greek, you could sort of, uh, <coughs> get an understanding of the culture that's there, because it is different from the Western culture, it is not at all in, in any shape or form like the Western culture, it is very different. So, if you want to study older cultures, if you want to study uh, cultures that were of the antiquity era, this is what we, this is what you would do. This is how you would begin to assemble your idea or uh, understanding of this particular area, and that's kind of what I do. And it's sort of now it's, it's, 
uh, is for me it's pretty much routine. It's, it's what I normally do. So, uh, <laughs> and that means what's going to happen is that uh, I have to sort of juggle things around. And I'm going to talk. I was going to talk about my schedule in terms of uh, the BTS log, but uh, we're kind of behind. So, uh, and you're kind of seeing. Let's talk about perspective and appearances. You're seeing this in the past ten cents. I've already filmed this. As you've seen, it's already been up, and it's past the date that we're actually talking about. So you're seeing this after the date of Thursday and Friday. You're not seeing this before the date of Thursday and Friday. So what that means is you're seeing things in the past tense, and I'm talking about things in the future tense. So <laughs> two different perspectives, two different uh, ways of seeing things. Mm. And that does, and sometimes cause an issue. But uh, I think, I think all in all, things should be. I, I'm going to be trying to, as, as people start get more aware of my uh, channel. I recently peaked at 43, 43 views. Yay for that! For forty three views, uh, I'm still stuck at a uh, hundred and sixteen uh, subscribers. I'm happy for the hundred and sixteen subscribers that I have. That's great. You know. Don't get me wrong about that, but uh, when you're watching other channels, particularly uh, the pretty young girls, and they go within a month to two months, they go from nothing to 600 views to 600 subscribers within uh, a period of two months. And two years on, uh, you're still at 116, or you're struggling with 116. Uh, the uh, writing is kind of on the wall that. Uh, your channel is not that popular. And I go over to see, well, I go to YouTube and sort of see how do you make your channel more popular. Well, <sighs> their solution is become more popular. That's how you become more popular, is by becoming more popular. In other words, uh, ditch the science, ditch uh, the research, and become an entertaining, an enter entertainment channel. Do comedy on your, do this, do that, you know. In terms of, Doing what uh, sort of what is popular out there. In other words, go see what's out there. See what other people are doing that, are, that is popular, and do the exact same thing. Don't provide anything that's different. <laughs> well, that's not what I'm about, and I'm not. I don't mind being a nerd. I don't mind being uh, even a nerd on YouTube. As I said, I'm an nth degree nerd. So uh, this is the uh, this is par for the course for me. This is where things usually go for me. So, we're going to stick with this. We're going to stick with the science format. We do have some entertaining shows uh, that will be coming in as well. Uh, but things are now, because of uh, the church, things are kind of, the, the schedule is kind of jumbled up. I was going to take you walking with me last night to do food shopping, but uh, it's gotten cold again. And I ended up going food shopping around 9.30. The store closes around 11.30, so I really didn't have time to sort of take my time walking. I had to walk quickly uh, to, and, to and from the store. Uh, that uh, So that didn't really leave any time for uh, filming. <sighs> but I was able to get what I needed because, as I said, the, uh, as of Saturday night, when I come home on Saturday night, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up filming... Uh, what happens uh, Saturday night? Saturday night is quite interesting. I think you will enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> it provides a view of Greek Easter that most people don't see. And so I will vlog then. I'll probably vlog tomorrow night for, for Thursday and Friday. And I'll see how I put this into the BTS vlog. I might put some of it into the BTS vlog. I might put all of it into the BTS vlog. Uh, but for sure, if that doesn't happen, I'll put it up as uh, as uh, ad hoc notes on the uh, Bass Institute channel, the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute channel. I'll put it up there, uh, and you can sort of see the ad hoc notes there. And this is what ad hoc notes are for. Things that don't fit in here uh, properly, then they'll go over to uh, the Institute channels, and you'll be able to see, see them there. Uh... We're coming to the end. Uh, this is mostly a update video. 
uh, <laughs> I haven't been I haven't been vlogging at night. I've been too tired to vlog at night. For so, uh, <laughs> this is gonna have to do. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I know this is only seven minutes, but <laughs> Galopa Galopa see you. <laughs>
argue against it, but not without intimidating in terms of beating them up. Uh, but but you can't force them into doing what what you think is correct. Uh, people have to come to these decisions on their own. And this is what true whether you're talking about Christianity or anything, any, you know, any ideas, any any theology, any religion. People have to come to their understanding by themselves and in their own terms. And all you do, if you want to fit, help facilitate this, is provide options. And you provide options in forms of in, in form of information. You know, letting people choose what they want. But more often than not, this isn't the case. More often than not, it's uh, once people will try to sort of be in, be uh, quote unquote inclusive, they'll try to be tolerant. But when they find that the person is not receptive to their ideas, the whole attitude changes. They're no longer tolerant. They're no longer nice. They're no longer polite. And now, as you have to do it my way, or we're no longer going to be uh, uh, either talking to other, we're not longer be friends, or <laughs> you know, uh, in, in the worst case scenario, in terms of the government. You end up in jail in sort of a, a re-education center, uh, <laughs> and so this is sort of these are the barriers against uh, 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 dealing with poverty because you have a lot of idealists who are not willing to give up their own ideas. For them, the idea, the concept, the cause is more important than the people who are suffering. So <laughs> uh, that's activism for you. So. If you're wondering why, anyway, this guy does a lot of, you know, new agey, you know, hippie stuff, but why isn't he an activist? Well, because activists uh, aren't really, act, aren't active actually doing anything. And more often than not, it's about forcing other people to their own opinions. So, there's no tolerance there, there's no understanding of other people need to understand what you're doing. People need time to understand. And some people may, even if they given time, they may not want to what you're doing they not may not agree with it so uh, that being said you know this is where research comes in for myself research is more is an open thing it's not closed and restricted and so it does it does involve the uh, agricultural technologies it does involve uh, it, what I'm working on now looking at uh, bringing biochemistry uh, more fully into organic chemistry connecting uh, points that are missing there are a lot of holes between organic chemistry and biochemistry that need to be dealt with. Once that's dealt with, then uh, a more robust type of uh, medicine can be developed because uh, you now have a better chemical understanding of what's going on inside the human body. Human body. The human body is basically an organic chemistry set. It's organic chemistry that's going on in here. Whether it's eating, whatever it is. Is all organic chemistry. If you have an understanding of organic chemistry, you have an understanding of what's going on inside the human body, and you can deal with issues on a on a better basis than you could if uh, you didn't have uh, the organic chemistry. In other words, it doesn't mean you just had a medical knowledge. You could deal with the body to a certain degree, but it would be better, and you would be able to deal with the issues within the human body better. If you had an understanding of organic chemistry connected to uh, medicine, medicine is essentially bio, uh, biochemistry. It's uh, the chemistry of, of biology. So uh, that's where all the money would go. <laughs> that's, that, that's where what's going on now, uh, and or everything is connected to physics, and that gives you uh, where we are now on open exploration of the universe. So uh, I'm gonna leave this here. Our time is up. And I will see you possibly tonight because I'm going I'm, I'm to be vlogging from my second home tonight at church. All right, take it easy.
Democratic Earth. Earth.